All right, I got that problem turbo apart. And as you can see, uh, there's a little bit of carnage. Here's the center section. That might be what was causing the uh, massive oil leak going into the exhaust. I'm gonna clean these parts up with brake cleaner. I already have the uh, other turbo put together. But moving on to the next step. Okay. So we got two rebuilt turbos. The lighting in this garage sucks. Sorry about that. Um, this is the original one. I took it apart and cleaned everything up with brake cleaner. Um, spins nice and smooth now. I think I'm actually going to reinstall this one. Uh, simply because I hate removing these studs. And I've got one that's got a uh, nut on it that's totally messed up. But you see, no more baby rattle. Nice and smooth. Um, this is the other one that I bought rebuilt already and you can see what they do when they rebuild it they pretty much clean everything up and repaint it and then put a new center section in it so that's kinda nice the only thing is is the kit does not come with these stupid uh, studs I wish it did and I know I have spares around somewhere but I'm not digging through everything for hours on end to find them but I call this the magic box and it had a whole bunch of gaskets and stuff um, the actual center cartridge kit comes with um, all new copper crush washers and a um, drain line gasket, which is nice uh, when you go to rebuild it. But uh, like I said, one of these is going to be a spare since we've got two Outbacks, uh, two Outback XTs, and they both use the same turbo. Just keep one as a spare and then uh, put this one back in. Next up, uh, gonna fit the drain line to the motor and get the turbo reinstalled. All right, got the turbo ba bolted back in. I hooked up the uh, first cat on the downpipe. I got to go under the car and hook up the exhaust. But we're moving right along. Everything went back together pretty smoothly. I got a new um, drain line. Probably can't see it down there, but it's the uh, reinforced silicone line so that'll be great all right let's keep going all right we got everything bolted back together I put the uh, new ex expansion tank on here and uh, <coughs> what I'm gonna do see I got everything bolted back together I'm gonna leave the top cover off make sure there's no leaks anywhere and then I'll put the uh, engine cover back on when I'm done with that. But first, I'm going to do an oil change. Um, it's a little secret for you guys. If you're ever on the forums, like Bob is the oil guy .com, I think is what it is. They did some research on oil filters. And this is an oil filter I've been using for years. And they just changed the design of it. It used to have like a sandpaper grip. But now it's just this blue colored filter. I don't know if you can still get the uh, sandpaper grip version, but it's a PL14610 and it works on the, uh, all of the turbocharged Subarus I have, including the Baja and both of the Outbacks, and it worked on my STI as well, and they were all 05s. I found this in my parts bin. I'm hoping that this drain plug actually fits because it's magnetic. It might not but if it does, that'd be great. And then this is the oil that I use in a Hyler Mileage Subarus. It's the uh, VR1 1030. Um, the Baja motor tolerances were built for this, which is the same weight, but it's in the full synthetic. And then these guys right here are your oil drain plug gaskets. So there's your part number for that. It's a Dorman, and I think uh, 10 of them come in a package, it looks like. But you can get all this stuff on Amazon for fairly cheap. Uh, those are a few of my tips. And I might change out the rear diff to this, which is what I normally use in the rear differentials on the Subarus and in the um, transmissions. But this has an automatic transmission, so it uses some sort of ATF. I'm not sure what that is, but I'm going to find out. 
and most likely I'll do a flush on that too. So off to the oil change. All right, got everything put back together. Lost some coolant when we removed the turbo, so I'm gonna have to reburp the system. Um, did the oil change, filter change. Um, other than that, we're gonna get this thing fired up. And the only other thing I'd be concerned about is the battery might be dead because it's been sit sitting all week, hasn't been driven. Um, looks like I need to tighten one more hose clamp up, so hold on and we'll come right back. All right, got that hose clamp tightened. Um, one thing, I cleaned out uh, the exhaust sections that had the catalytic converters in it with a brake cleaner. So it's probably gonna smoke pretty bad for a little bit and then it should taper off. So let's start up and see what happens. <coughs> Yeah, there's a brake cleaner in there and quite a bit of oil, so probably going to take a minute to burn all that out. Need some coolant. There's quite a bit of fluids I spilled in here too, so it's probably going to smoke pretty good from the engine bay for a little bit. I also put some um, anti-seize on the bolts that'll smoke for a little bit when I put everything back together. So anyhow, we're just going to top off the coolant here that we lost and we took the turbo out. Not making a uh, clackety-clack noise anymore, which is what the turbo was doing. for a bit. Burp the system, get all the bubbles out of the system. Smoke from the exhaust is still going, but it's starting to clear up. It's almost nothing left now. These are all good signs. Remember, paid 500 bucks for this because somebody told the lady that the motor was blown. Got it home, went through it, checked it. The only thing I could find that was wrong with it was the turbo was blown. So, it's gonna take a while to burp this coolant, so I'll come back. All right, got it up and running. Burp the coolant. I'm still looking for some replacement push pins for the uh, engine cover because I swear they're mechanics don't know what's going on with these motors uh, there's so many like hose clamps and stuff everywhere you don't really need all that stuff on here but anyways um, burp the coolant and I had to rev the motor a whole bunch of times because it's just totally full of old crappy oil from when the turbo blew and you can see here it blew all this stuff out the smoking is you know gone down quite a bit but I'm still gonna have to rev the motor and get the rest of that oil out of the exhaust but um, yeah no no leaks that I can see it the motor was steaming quite a bit because I did um, I did rinse off the undercarriage and everything and sprayed off a bunch of uh, oil and stuff with some brake clean so but yeah um, we're gonna take it for a drive here in a little bit but it's as far as this goes, this is a this is a done deal. I might do a uh, another episode uh, where I show you how to do the window and everything. But aside from that, this is only 1,100 bucks total to get it up and running. You know, about 1,200 bucks total to get it up and running. So that's a good deal right there. I'll catch you guys next time. So about oh maybe two miles uh, into our drive back from lunch the baby rattle sound came back so I guess there's gonna be a part four because that first turbo just blew up so 
first that was the one I rebuilt and the edges inside of the um, compressor housing and the exhaust housing were pretty jagged so I'm wondering if it made contact and broke the bearings inside that uh, replacement cartridge so we'll have to scrap that whole turbo most likely and then uh, use the other one that was totally 100% rebuilt put that in there um, I'm gonna take the oil lines off and clean them out and see how it goes from there so I guess there will be a part four we'll see you guys later bye bye